Oh, and thank you so much for joining me on WOW's YouTube channel. My name is Sasha Reed, and today I've got a really awesome tutorial for you where we're going to make see-through clear cards. These are quick, easy, simple, and quite cheap to make. All you need is some acetate. I use heat-resistant acetate. It just means it doesn't warp quite so much, but if you're slow and careful, you can probably do it on regular acetate. So like old projection sheets work really well and really nicely, or packaging. I'm also going to use this new WOW Trio, one of the um, embossing powders from this WOW Trio. This one is called the Timeless Trio. Um, they've got such beautiful embossing powders in this trio, I really love it. And I'm using the kind of teal rose gold one, plus a couple stamp sets. So the first thing we're going to do is trim down my acetate to fit my stamp. So I had a measure of my stamp and I'm trimming down my acetate to kind of fit the panel of that stamp. So you want a nice background stamp. If you don't have a background stamp, then just combine a whole bunch of random stamps. We're doing Christmas cards tonight, so I'm using a Christmas themed stamp. But if you don't have that, then just grab some snowflake stamps and arrange them on a stamp platform create your own background it works really well I'm also going to cut myself a panel for inside my acetate and this is going to be half a centimeter smaller than my acetate panel on the outside just so that it fits nice in there and it doesn't um, stick out anywhere outside of the acetate on the outside so once I've got those two bits done, I'm gonna then go ahead and stamp. Now you really only get one shot with this, so make sure you stamp your, or ink up your stamp really, really well. If you're using multiple stamps, make sure you're inking those up very well, maybe heat set in between if you have to do a few multiple stamps, but you cannot stamp again when you do this if you're doing a panel. So I can't put my magnets down to hold down the acetate sheet, and so therefore I only get one chance and one shot at doing this. I'm going to also use an embossing buddy or an embossing powder bag. Um, I'm just using this purely because on acetate, it can be a bit extra staticky, um, but WOW's embossing powders are amazing. You don't actually need one of these powder bags. It's got sort of a built-in system, but having said that with acetate, I find it so staticky that it's nice to use an embossing powder bag as well. So I've inked up my stamp really, really well. I am pushing it down really, really well. And as you can see, when I pulled it up, it kind of lifted my acetate a little bit as well. So that's why I'm saying you only get one shot with it because it's really difficult to place it down in the same spot again. Um, and you can't really use magnets if you're using a nice big background stamp. So obviously the next step is sprinkling on the embossing powder. And as you can see, when I lift it up, the back of my acetate gets a bit covered in embossing powder. You can see it there on the back. It's just kind of stuck to it with static. That's what would happen all over the front of your piece of acetate if you didn't use some kind of powder on the top. You can use talcum powder, uh, baby powder, um, cornstarch, that kind of thing. You can use that as well. If you don't have a powder bag, you can just sprinkle some of that on. Now, if you get a bit of excess where you don't want it, you can just take your paintbrush and dust it off as you normally would and give it a little blow and it should be all nice and ready to go for you. Now I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper, I'm putting it in between, folded in between my acetate sheet just to keep the embossing powder from melting that's on the back of my acetate sheet. I can't dust it off very well because it's still um, powdery, so I'm just going to put that sheet in there to protect it. I'm going to keep it on my lowest heat setting as well because this embossing powder has got lots of little bits that melt and I don't want to blow all those away and I can't heat set it from the back because I'm trying to avoid melting that embossing powder on my acetate into the back of the acetate sheet. So you can kind of see here I don't have any now on the back because once I had pulled it off of that piece of paper, I brushed it all off. This is what it looks like when I've got my little bit of cardstock on the inside, it's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. These embossing powders have such detail and color to them. They're so pretty and so easy to use and you get such amazing vibrancy from them without having to mix any of your colors. Now I wanna make a little sentiment for the front of my card, so I'm going to use these nested dies from scrapbook.com and I just kind of have a brief measure with my stamp over the top of it and work out which one will fit just nicely for my sentiment and then I'll grab the next layer up so I can do a sort of a layered background with it. Now I want my background to kind of match my card, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink up all the edges because that's the only bit we're gonna see on my largest shape. And then I'm going to cover it in the exact same embossing powder we used for that background stamping. 
this is just a nice easy way to make sure that your card all flows really nicely together because it's the exact same colors as before and because it's a little bit of a larger surface area we really get to see those colors pop when we go ahead and melt it again I'm going on number one setting because it is such a flaky sort of embossing powder with lots of blobbies that pop off you can see those little black bits there flying off as I'm heating it on the low um, the low power setting not low power low blow setting I guess you could say now for my sentiment I'm going to go and stamp it in black and use a clear embossing powder so the black embossing powder is beautiful but I find that it's a lot easier if you use a nice dark black ink and then the clear over top and then that way if you get any black like if you were to get any embossing powder anywhere where you don't want it you're not going to see it because it's clear and this black is beautiful and dark and crisp and again I'm only going to get one shot with it I don't want to muck about trying to double stamp it so I've just inked it up really really well three times and I'm going to sprinkle on my clear embossing powder and you can see here that the wow embossing powder is beautiful it doesn't stick anywhere it shouldn't stick anyways but just in case I've used the clear over top the black and you get this gorgeous crisp dark black image now at some point I accidentally put my finger in my ink pad and then left a little black mark there along the edge. If you ever get that problem where you end up leaving ink on your card, if you get a sand eraser, they're usually found in any stationary aisle in the shop, um, just grab one with like that sort of blue sand eraser and you can just actually erase that top layer of card off and it doesn't look any different, it doesn't wreck your cardstock, but you can get rid of those little smudge marks. Really easy tip to do. My eraser I think was like four for a pound in the UK. So I've got my little sentiment ready to go, but I want to add a little bit more oomph to my card. So I'm going to add some ribbon and then I found this little gem in my stash and it looks a bit like a snowflake. So I'm going to use that for the top of my bow that I'm going to create as well. Now the point in the ribbon is it's going to hold our card together. So obviously you've got that white bit of cardstock on the inside. I don't want to put any adhesive in it because you'll be able to see the adhesive. So we are going to hold it together by tightly wrapping some ribbon around the front of the card. And then that way it holds it in nice and snug and doesn't come out. So I'm going to use some red line tape, which is like a really, really, really strong uh, sticky tape. And I'm going to just stick a little strip of that down. Fold my ribbon over the top of that, put another little strip on top of that ribbon and fold it back over the top of that. Now then it's going to look like a bit of a hot ugly mess but that's fine, that's why we're going to do a nice little fake bow and stick that on the top and make it look like we tied a, a bow around it. This is the sort of cheater's way where you can get a nice perfect bow and you don't have to worry about trying to tie that bow while tying ribbon around your card. So once my bow is ready to go I'm going to use a glue gun stick some hot glue down to hold that bow in place and then I can go ahead and put a little bit more hot glue down and put my little gem on top of that and that covers up that nice little mess that's under there and it holds our card together beautifully and looks really classy as well. This ribbon is nice sheer ribbon so you can kind of see the pattern still through it but it also covers up that tape really nicely as well. So when that's done I'll go ahead and put my elements together. I'm just going to use some liquid glue on my sentiment, stick that down on top of my embossed image and then I'm going to use some foam pads on the back of that to stick it to the front of my card. And that finishes off the card. It takes minutes. I think my footage for this video was about half an hour. So it only took me half an hour of kind of faffing about. If you wanted to bulk make these, you could probably do it a lot quicker. Because you could just do all your embossing in one go. All your stamping in one go. And you get this gorgeous, unique Christmas card. Um, that you can give away. Obviously you're not limited to just Christmas cards, you could go ahead and use whatever stamps you've got in your collection, any kind of background stamps will do, and you can go ahead and create any kind of birthday cards, thank you cards, it's the same concept, just use a different stamp. You can use solid uh, embossing powders rather than the kind of multicolored ones if you want. Glitter powders also work really beautifully as you can see in this card. These are some cards that I made about a year ago for my own YouTube channel and I loved how they turned out. Now when you're doing this you can obviously do your envelope as well to match and all I did was stick a piece of paper underneath that envelope flap, stamp it again and then I heat embossed the envelope. So now I've got a matching envelope and card that took me just minutes to make. So I hope you have a go with this one and you enjoyed it tonight. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below. And check out the next YouTube video on WoW's channel. Take care and hope you have a fabulous day.